last class uh, we had looked at uh, uh, how vaporization times are determined by the droplet diameters right and uh, we had said injectors are the devices that are used to optimize the uh, propellants. Now let us look at what are the various kinds of injectors that are used and uh, how do they operate and what are the difficulties in operation. Now uh, injectors are uh, uh, devices that uh, put the propellant into a fine uh, fine jet of liquid okay. Now what happens to this jet of liquid? I am sure most of you would have played with a garden hose right. When you uh, reduce the area it comes out like a thin sheet and then breaks up into droplets. Why should it break up into droplets? Yes. What is causing that instability? Huh? Now, if you look at what are the forces that are at play in in this process, one is inertia force. Then there is a surface tension of the liquid. The other thing is the viscous forces because there is an ambient atmosphere that is still right and therefore you have viscous forces that are trying to slow it down and that breaks it up into a very fine droplets okay. So that is what also actually happens in a liquid rocket motor. So you use you bring out the uh, fl propellant in a fine jet then it will break up and uh, become very fine droplets. The size of the droplets has a, a relationship to the size of the injector. We will see what that is in a short while. Now the basic job of the injector is to break up the uh, propellants into fine spray or fine droplets right. So it has to be designed such that Firstly, we need stable combustion. Okay, uh, if the combustion is unstable, then we are into problem. Uh, first, we need stable combustion. Then we need high combustion efficiency. that is we are looking at excess of 92 percent. If the combustion efficiency is small although we are using uh, propellants we are not getting a maximum benefit out of it only a fraction of it is being utilized okay. So we would want the combustion efficiency to be as high as possible. Uh, now we also want this to uh, make sure that the combustion chamber length is small. Please remember this is a pressure vessel that we are talking about combustion chamber is a pressure vessel and uh, if you have a larger length then it means weight. So we want it to be as short as possible, we want to have very high combustion efficiencies also. So uh, there are two things that are running uh, in opposite directions right, I mean one is forcing it to be longer, if you want higher combustion efficiencies you want it longer but then if you have it very long then your weights will go up. So designing it is a challenge and lastly this also has to ensure that uh, combustion temperatures were 
what do we mean by this? Uh, there is a spray that is there. We don't want any kind of hot spots. Okay, we don't want uh, some places to be very very hot, then the other places to be not so hot, because that would in turn mean that the cooling problem becomes more acute in some region and the motor might give way in some portion. Okay, so we do not want that, and therefore we want the combustion temp temperature to be uh, within limits. Uh, this is in some sense uh, if some of you have studied uh, aircraft engines there is something called as pattern factor which the which is talked about in gas turbine uh, combustors also at the end of it you want a nearly uniform distribution because then you are feeding it into the turbine you do not want hot spots there. So all these things needs to be ensured by a proper injector design. Now let us look at the uh, different kinds of injectors that are used in the industry for this purpose. One is a straight hole injector, then there are swirl injectors, okay. Now uh, in the straight hole injectors there are uh, three types, one is shower head and uh, unlike like and unlike impinging and lastly coaxial. Let us look at uh, how these are. Uh, as you can see here uh, the first one is the shower head injector, uh, this is nothing but very similar to the shower that we use every day right. Uh, these are straight holes and uh, there is fuel and oxidizer that is coming. Now uh, notice that uh, they are going parallel to each other right. So therefore in a sense you are not utilizing the possibility of using the momentum of these jets to break them up right. One is uh, as I said if you push a jet into quiescent air uh, there is viscous forces, uh, inertia forces and uh, surface tension these interact and make it into fine droplets. But in addition to that you could make the jets interact with each other and therefore uh, break up into a fine spray in a much shorter distance right. So uh, in this shower head it is not done whereas in a light doublet this is utilized that is uh, you have either an oxidizer or fuel jet coming here and either uh, oxidizer or fuel jet coming here. Uh, the name like is there because you are using either fuel on fuel or oxidizer on oxidizer okay. So, these jets interact and they break uh, break up into very fine droplets in a much shorter distance. Whereas if you look at this, this is an unlike jet, unlike impingement that is you have oxidizer coming and impinging on fuel okay. Uh, this kind of uh, arrangement people would not use in uh, uh, when they are using hypergolic fuels right hypergolic fuels if you remember they do not need any injection and once they see each other they start reacting. So in this case you would have heat release very very close to the uh, injector head which sometimes might not be uh, recommended and therefore whenever uh, people use hypergolic fuels uh, they use this kind of uh, combination that is 
uh, like combination that is fuel on fuel or oxidizer on oxidizer. Now, if you look at uh, like or unlike doublet, the jets come here, right? Uh, we will be able to show something. If you took take a look at like or unlike doublet, it is something like this. you have either fuel or oxidizer coming here and either fuel or oxidizer coming in here right if you look at these jets interact at some point and the resultant direction in which the jet goes off is given like this. So, this angle if we call it beta injector and uh, this uh, let us say this is alpha f alpha o x v f we can show that if there is any problem with one of the jets right in this case uh, we are going to have a change in the direction of the resultant jet and sometimes it might go and impinge against the wall the hot gases so we would not want that so if we calculate the tan of the angle beta injector this can be expressed as this is from purely momentum balance Now, if due to any reason the mass flow rate or one of the parameters of one of the jets varies, then the resultant direction will also change, which is not a very good thing, right. It will also result in changes to the mixture ratio. Locally, the mixture ratio might uh, also get affected. We do not want that, and therefore, uh, use of an unlike triplet as shown here is more recommended. In this case, the direction does not change and uh, it is more uh, robust. And you also can use something like an unlike pentad as shown here, that is, we are only seeing a section here which will show 3, there will be uh, one more on the uh, two more on the uh, either side. Okay. Uh, in addition to this, uh, we have looked at uh, shower head and uh, like and unlike impinging. I said uh, there are coaxial injectors which is shown here, uh, coaxial injectors are typically used for uh, uh, 
cases where you have uh, liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen because if you remember hydrogen would already be a gas. So, uh, then it is easier to uh, have this kind of uh, injectors wherein it is coaxial you will have the liquid in the core and the gas on the periphery. You could also swirl it uh, the inner fluid that is the liquid and you will get a swirl injector. So, coaxial uh, injectors you will have uh, many of these repeated right they are each is one unit and you can repeat it to get your overall injector. Now, let us look at the various uh, advantages and disadvantages of uh, these injectors. Firstly, let us take the shower head. Now, shower head if you look at it, uh, it is also very good for film cooling. Remember uh, we probably are going to use film cooling because you need a layer of fuel on the walls injected on the walls. It is easier to get that with a shower head, uh, but as I said we are not using the momentum of the jets to break up into very fine uh, droplets. So, the uh, atomization is poor and hence it will require a very large volume for combustion chamber design. So, although this is good for film cooling, Then the like doublet right uh, in this case uh, the mixing is a lot better because you are using the momentum of the jets to break them up. So, uh, it also leads to uh, stabler combustion and the uh, volume of the combustion chamber is also very small. but it will have a larger control volume a larger combustion volume compared to unlike doublet. but it is also very simple to design the manifold we will see what is the uh, manifold in a short time. Uh, what you see here is the design of the manifold uh, the portion that is upstream of the injector is called the manifold 
Now, if you are wanting to have uh, unlike injection, uh, unlike doublet, you see that the fuel and oxidizer must be, uh, I mean you should have one fuel uh, manifold and then oxidizer and then fuel and then oxidizer. So, it is not easy to design the pipeline and other things upstream of this, right? it becomes very complicated. But whereas if you have a like doublet, uh, it is a lot more easier because uh, you are going to have only fuel on fuel or oxidizer on oxidizer. This has very good mixing. So, faster combustion and smaller volume of the combustion chamber. It is also not very difficult to uh, design this manifold, uh, but as we said earlier, we we should not be using this when we are using hypergolic uh, fluids. Uh, both these designs as we discussed earlier are uh, uh, I mean the design is very sensitive and prone to changes in mixture ratio because of what we uh, discussed here the angle at which they come in and interact. So, <coughs> they are very sensitive to uh, mixture ratio changes. If you take a look at what unlike triplet that we discussed, uh, this would have uh, very good mixing properties and as well as it is not sensitive to changes in mixture ratio. Uh, the design of the manifold could be a lot more troublesome in this because you want fuel oxidizer and then again fuel. So, Uh, 
uh, very similar to unlike pentad is also very similar to this okay then lastly the swirl burner now in the case of a swirl burner it is probably going to be very difficult to use uh, film cooling simply because if you look at uh, this figure here as I said earlier uh, there are going to be a number of elements of this. So, you have to kind of make sure that on the periphery uh, you take care to ensure that you have only uh, fuel being injected something similar to what is shown here uh, all this has coaxial injectors in the center right if you look at it. Uh, there are a large number of coaxial injectors in the center, but on the periphery you have uh, holes wherein only hydrogen is injected. So, this will have good mixing and faster combustion uh, but it might uh, have issues with film cooling Now, all these uh, injectors one of the uh, troublesome issues with uh, liquid rocket engines is uh, if you look at a liquid rocket engine it is very very manufacturing intensive it has uh, firstly it has uh, if you are looking at uh, uh, turbo pump fed systems you have to design pumps you have to design uh, turbines and all that there are a lot more moving parts firstly and if you come to the thrust chamber or the combustor itself the uh, design is very very intensive in terms of manufacturing. Uh, if you have uh, cooling regenerative cooling then uh, those uh, coolant tubes need to be very carefully done manufacturing is a very critical thing there because you are looking at very fine tube sizes and uh, the toler tolerances that you can give is uh, not very large. So, it really uh, you need to have very good manufacturing uh, skills in order to make sure that you have a very good liquid rocket system. If you look at the injectors also uh, all of them are very small holes and uh, you need to take special care to ensure that the design is very good right. Uh, one of the things that people take care is what should be the uh, L by D ratio length to diameter of each injector it is typically something between uh, 4 to 5 and you need to ensure on the manifold side right manifold side it has a uh, manifold side entry smooth rounded entry and on the uh, combustor side it has a sharp edged exit. Now uh, one of the troubles is if you look at how to make this rocket motor right. Uh, there are some designs which allow you to make the injector 
first and then weld the entire injector plate to the manifold. Uh, such designs are called uh, uh, accessible and there are designs wherein uh, in this case accessible design you can remove whatever burrs that are there due to manufacturing before you finally weld it. But if there are burrs that are there on the injector right then the mass flow rate of one particular injector might change. So that creates a problem uh, in the functioning right and uh, that uh, needs to be taken care of. So that is why I said manufacturing is a big problem in terms of liquid rocket motors. Uh, so there are uh, three kinds of uh, injector heads, one is uh, accessible that is uh, you can make the injector head and then weld it onto the rest of the motor. So both sides you can uh, now see and uh, remove the burrs that are there on while manufacturing this that is possible in this there are uh, semi accessible and then blind also that is you will not be able to access it at all. So in that case you have to look at uh, uh, some uh, different kinds of uh, ways to remove the burrs okay like uh, uh, electro polishing and other techniques otherwise you cannot uh, remove these burrs through mechanical means right okay uh, now we have uh, kind of understood how injectors work and we also know what is the mass flow rate uh, expression for mass flow rate through an injector we had uh, said that m dot is equal to c d into a injector under root 2 rho l delta p right. So if you want to change the mass flow rate uh, remember uh, liquid rocket motors we can throttle the thrust that is we can increase or decrease the thrust. So if you want to change the mass flow rate uh, if you look at this expression uh, CD is fixed density of the liquid is fixed injector area is fixed. So the only thing that is available for changing the mass flow rate is the delta P. So therefore you can change the upstream pressure of the uh, uh, combustor that is the manifold pressure and get a higher or lower uh, injector uh, delta P across the injector and get the. Uh, required mass flow rate through the injector. But while doing that uh, one needs to be a little more careful Uh, as I said while doing the change in the mass flow rate one needs to be a little more careful simply because there is a region wherein the CD the coefficient of discharge if we plot the delta P across the injector and CD coefficient of discharge uh, the coefficient of discharge remains constant over some region and then drops and then goes like this like right but there is no guarantee that if you are reducing the delta p injector it might follow the same path okay it could follow a, a different path something like this while coming back 
this is known as uh, hysteresis. Uh, that is while going in one direction it takes a particular path while coming back it does not come back along the same path. So, if you are operating the motor in this you need to be very careful and it would be advisable not to operate the motor in this region and to avoid it completely because while doing the operations in one way it will have some mass flow rate while coming back it could have a different mass flow rate. Delta P you can change by either uh, uh, changing the pump output pressure. This is possible probably only in a uh, if a turbo pump in the other one you have a pressure regulator. So, you can regulate the pressure uh, that is acting in the tank ok. In a turbo pump you have to change the pump uh, power out uh, input then you can get a uh, lower or higher uh, delta P across the pump and therefore, the pressure at the manifold, but in the case of a pressure fed system you have to operate the pressure regulator to get the required throttling effect. Partly this uh, happens because if you look at it the fluid is uh, going through a path right there could be flow separation and other things. Now, if you are reducing the injector pressure the processes might not the flow separation process might not follow the same path while you are coming back right and that is why uh, this kind of hysteresis is observed. <coughs> so, we have now learnt uh, what is the mass flow rate through an injector and uh, if you remember uh, we can calculate uh, based on the thrust and ISP what is the mass flow rate of fuel right. Now, what the other information that we need is what is the area of injector that we need to use in order to design a particular liquid rocket motor right. If we know this area or the diameter then we can uh, design these injectors. Now, how to go about uh, designing this uh, injector uh, size. Now, as I said earlier uh, if you look at uh, what are the things that control the droplet size one is the injector diameter and the other is uh, the interplay between inertia forces, viscous forces and surface tension ok. So, if you uh, put this down in terms of non dimensional numbers then the non dimensional numbers that are of relevance here would be we said we one is Reynolds number and the other one is Weber number. Uh, Reynolds number you know is uh, inertia force by viscous force. Similarly, uh, the Weber number can be defined as ratio of inertia to surface tension. So, we can express Reynolds number of the I put the suffix j to indicate jet 
this we can write it as rho l v l rho l v j right then uh, sigma here indicates uh, surface tension forces okay so using this uh, we can come up with an expression for uh, something known as sutter mean diameter to the jet diameter What is sutter mean diameter? Any idea? Heard of it before? Sutter mean diameter. Okay. Uh, sutter mean diameter is nothing but the ratio of uh, volume to surface area okay if you take that ratio you will get uh, the uh, dimension as uh, 1 uh, meter so that is something that is used ratio of volume to Uh, this is more relevant in some sense because we said heat transfer depends on uh, surface area uh, right uh, larger the surface area then better will be the heat transfer so surface area to volume is uh, what is uh, known as sutter mean diameter and uh, this uh, dsmd by dj uh, is given as this is the expression for uh, Reynolds number uh, and Weber number connecting the uh, diameter of the jet to the sutter mean diameter. So if we want a particular sutter mean diameter right if we want the combustion to be complete within some length we would want a particular sutter mean diameter right we if you remember in the previous class we discussed about how vaporization times are affected by the diameters of the droplets so we will know what kind of diameters to use and therefore using this we can calculate what kind of jet diameters we would need right fine uh, typically the range of uh, Reynolds number and Weber number would be of the order of for rocket engines 10 power 5 to 10 power 6 so uh, we would get dsmd to be approximately equal to something like dj okay so if you have a uh, 1 millimeter uh, jet diameter or an injector diameter of 1 millimeter then your sutter mean diameter will be something like 90 microns right 
So you can now uh, based on this you can design uh, the number of injectors to be used I mean the injector diameter and then uh, to get the required mass flow rate of fuel and oxidizer you can decide on the number of injectors and then on the injector plate you cannot have all of them uh, with a very small gap between the two. So you need to have a sufficient clearance between one and the other. So using that you can now inject uh, des design the entire injector plate right. They do not diverge at an angle, the resultant jet will go at an angle. Uh, the which diameter dj you are talking about dj is nothing but we are uh, simply assuming dj is nothing but equal to the injector diameter okay so we have now learnt uh, how to design the injector um, now the only part that is remaining is how to size the entire engine right I said we can now uh, using this design the uh, injector diameter and the number of injectors and how to arrange them and all that. So we now can uh, uh, design the overall thrust chamber. Uh, if you remember uh, AT. right AT we had got from what considerations thrust and mass flow rate considerations right uh, this is fixed then what we are left with is how to design this length of the motor and uh, what should be the uh, cross sectional area of the uh, motor or the engine in this case so this is AC and this is length if you remember we had defined something called L star with respect to solid rockets right we had said L star is nothing but VC by AT so this L is uh, very similar to this now one way to look at uh, this L is the gases will have some mean velocity let us call that as u mean so L star should be greater than u mean into time of vaporization right if we have to have we discussed this in the previous class that the vaporization time is probably the slowest process is the vaporization process and this is the time that will be the largest other times are smaller than this. So if you design a motor such that L star is greater than this then you are going to have a chamber wherein the combustion is going to be nearly complete okay. So we have uh, now looked at what is the length now this is a chamber in which you are adding heat so therefore the pressure from head end to nozzle end is going to drop right but for all our calculations of uh, thrust and other things what we are interested in is this pressure right this is the pressure that uh, if you look at the thrust equation PC80 uh, uh, CFPC80 right this is the one that governs this so we need to ensure that the pressure drop from the head end to the nozzle end is as small as possible right so then uh, this sizing needs to be also done primarily this AC is determined on how many injectors and how do we house them that is the one that drives how we choose AC okay so if we have uh, different AC by 80 if we have AC by 80 is equal to 
1.2 then p2 by p1 this ratio would be 0.85 and if we have ac by at is equal to 3 <coughs> will be larger because you now have a larger area to have a mass flow through. So, with this we complete uh, our discussions on liquid rocket motors right. We have learnt how to go about designing pressure fed systems, pump fed systems and then also how to look at what is the droplet size and uh, also look at what is the length of the combustion chamber we need to have ok. Uh, this finishes our discussions on liquid rocket motors. Uh, in the next classes uh, we will look at hybrid rocket motors ok. Thank you.